Hello, welcome back to Startup Screen Printing. My name is Jesse. Today we're looking at some vector artwork. We're going to be an illustrator. I'm going to show you how I take an image, a photograph, and turn it into a piece of vector art to create films for screen printing. So if we jump right in, this is a piece of artwork that a customer sent me for a job recently, and it was actually a photograph of an old t-shirt. So they had, uh, this is the t-shirt that they had, and of course this is the finished graphic that we're going to create. So what I had them send me is just an image, you know, they just took it with their phone from directly overhead of the t-shirt. And he sent me this and he said, could you recreate this? And the answer is absolutely yes. This is actually very simple to do. So let me show you how I would go about doing it. So the first thing I'm going to do is select the image. And over here in the right hand panel um, in Illustrator under the properties, we see an option called image trace. We can also get uh, up here an object. We can go down to image trace and we can do make. Now I like to, there are some presets here. I like to start with what uh, essentially is this black and white logo version. I actually have a custom one set out here that I call base trace. But if we start with the black and white logo and then we hit this uh, options panel here, then it gives us a lot of control over how the image trace works. And as you can see, to start off with, we look pretty good. I mean, we've got just about where we need to be, but if you look at some of the letters, we've got some kind of, you know, harsh edges, uh, some points that should be rounded and things like that. So I'm going to kind of play with these controls a little bit and get a little better image out of this uh, photograph. <clears throat> so if we start, I usually start with the threshold. We can move this up or down. If I move it way up, you can see things go away, way down. Um, it takes too much. So if we just kind of get this to a point where it looks like it's about like I want, if you see, you know, we start to lose a little bit of detail down here next to the horse head. If I go too high, you know, it kind of clips into that shape. So I don't want to go too high here. I want to just keep an eye on all of the shapes and get to a point where I feel like it's a pretty smooth shape. And it looks like most everything is pretty smooth at this point. Now, the next thing I usually do is throw up the paths and corners really high. Um, this is why I have this set as a preset and you can always do that right here. You can choose this option and save as a preset and it'll start you at the same point each time. That's what I like to do. But again, as you can see, we're pretty close to where we need to be. We can then start to play around with removing some of the corners. If we want, we can go down here to these, these letters and, and say, all right, well, let's, let's maybe bring it back up a little bit or maybe go down and see what that looks like. Now we're starting to get pretty good. Maybe I can take the paths down, bring the corners back up and it might give a little bit better shape. See that that's looking pretty good there. It looks pretty consistent. The end has got some pretty good shapes on it. Um, most of these are looking nice. If you wanted to go back and clean some of these up manually, you could always do that. But again, as you can see, we've gotten pretty close to a finished product already. Now the noise setting, this last one, if we take it all the way down, sometimes that's that's the best setting. Sometimes if you start to get, um, you know, if there's some graininess in the image then it's good to bump up the noise to get rid of some of the artifacts that begin to show up in different areas. So we can bump the noise up, but as you can see, if we go too high, it starts to take away some of the open areas. So look at the horse's ear, you know, so this little spot here got kind of taken away. So we don't want to do that. So I'm actually happy with this as it is. So now we can just expand it. And then once we expand, we now can take what I would normally do is double click into here. It's, this is now grouped. Anytime you expand, it's going to group the object. And so if I double click into it until I get to a black, then I can go to select, same, fill and stroke, and just delete it. Now I've got everything on, its, on, the, on the layer by itself. Okay, so as you can see at this point, we've got a, an image that is, you know, it's nice and clean, but it's crooked. You know, if I, if I draw a square around this, uh, let's make this an outline. And you can kind of see this would be ideally uh, how we would want this to be lined up as far as a square. So let's basically make a little bounding box here that will give us some guidelines as to where this is going to land if it were all square. So got that bounding box. Let's now click the design itself. And I'm going to go over to this free transform tool right here. If I click it, I've got a few options here. 
Um, you could do this one, but it's going to keep everything kind of proportionate, like you're like you're adjusting a square. But I want this free distort. Okay, this one that this is going to allow me to have the most flexibility and freedom with this. So now, if I take, I can pull these edges, and it's only going to affect the corner that I'm I'm working with at that time. So I'm going to pull everything to where it looks pretty consistent and so now you can see across the right hand edge of this design we have it all in line with that and then across the top of the letters we've got about the same space above the O as we do the C on this left hand side it looks like we could probably come just a little bit more if, it, if it's making too large of jumps you can zoom in and uh, yeah so it's right there in line with that and then as I go down the path here right in line with that. Now I can take this design, pick out, I see how this bounding box is going outside of it. I can pick out some artifacts here. So let's remove the extra one there. Okay, so we have our design. Let's get rid of the square. We don't need this anymore. And now we can just begin to color it. So I, I, I just simply double click into each of these and I'm gonna select the, you know, whatever the most the easiest ones to select in this case is going to be the white. They're larger pieces. So I'm going to select everything that's white. Uh, it's going to be the horse, uh, this little piece of uh, earth right here looks like a, a, a mound or a hill with some flowers and stuff on it. This other horse leg I need in here. So I select everything that's white. I've also got these letters are going to be white. So I've selected everything that's going to be white. And obviously it's already white. So now I can just take and hold shift and highlight everything and it inverted my selection. So what it, what was selected became deselected, what was not selected became selected, which is now the that that teal blue color. So if I just take my eyedropper and select that blue, now I have my finished design. So super easy. The image trace tool is game changer for screen printers. I use it almost every day and almost every order when a customer brings me artwork that needs to be recreated the very first thing i do is work with the image trace tool to try and convert that to a proper vector graphic so that i can then create film and uh, create my screens so from here obviously the easy thing to do is we're going to select you could select these colors you know you turn this black you print a film invert it so that the white areas are black and print your next film or if you're using rip software then you make sure these are spot colors and then you can just print straight to your rip it will print both films ready to go um, depending on the color of shirt you might need an underbase you might not this particular order i do have an underbase with uh, because these are going on navy blue shirts so um, obviously that's going to vary depending on your particular uh, circumstance but Make use of that image trace. Get really familiar with the controls and, you know, adjusting the paths and the corners. If you if you got too many jagged, you know, edges and stuff, then maybe you reduce the number of paths so that it's just a straight line. Or if you have a lot of harsh corners, maybe you want to round them off a little bit so you can take those corners down, remove how many corners are in the design, um, and then mess with that noise. And I think you'll find that this tool is a screen printer's best friend. Um, in fact, I'll go as far to say there have been times when I thought about abandoning Adobe Illustrator. Um, I was going to go with some other platform or some other piece of software that wasn't as expensive as the Adobe Creative Suite is every month. But there there are no replacements for that image trace. And so it has been a, a lifesaver for me and has been the most often used tool for me throughout my entire screen printing career. If you have any questions about this tool or anything else in Illustrator, please let me know. Um, I did also just release a new service that providing for screen printers. So if you don't understand how to use these things, use these tools in Illustrator and create this artwork, or it's, it's a little bit daunting to you, or you just don't have time to focus on the artwork, you want to focus on the printing or the business, um, I do have a new service called Screen Print Collective where I'm providing a uh, unlimited design services for a low monthly subscription cost. So you can check that out at screenprintcollective.com and um, you know, let, reach out to me there if you want to get started on a plan so that uh, I can handle all of your design for you. Like I said, unlimited requests for one monthly subscription cost. 
So um, it's a super simple service, and I'll work on one project at a time. So it basically uh, reimagines the art department for you and gets that out of your mind so that you can focus on other parts of your business. So if you'd like for me to do that for you, again, that's uh, screenprintcollective.com. The link will be in the description, and uh, let me know if I can help you out there. So look forward to bringing you more design tips and tricks and videos like this. So um, again, if you have any specific questions about how to use Illustrator for screen printers and how to work with vector artwork and, and just uh, creating films and output files, and etc., then let me know. I want to create videos that are helpful to you and they're answering the questions that you have right now. So until next time, hope you all have a great day. And we'll talk soon.